Okay, so let's talk about uh, what you need in your kitchen, all the various pieces. Uh, let me be the first to say that we are not a fan of sets that you buy uh, that are pre-assembled. First of all, you always get them from one brand, which means that uh, you're going to get all one material. That's not necessarily, uh, necessarily the best way to go because we've explained the differences in the different materials, the difference in advantages using a cast iron or enamel cast iron compared to stainless steel. Um, and, and second of all, typically you're going to get pieces that are not necessarily good for you in your kitchen. Okay? There's a big difference between a, you know, a family of two, a couple that's cooking in the kitchen, and a family of five. You're cooking different quantities all the time, so sets pre that are predetermined don't necessarily match up with your needs. So what we encourage is you buy you know, one piece at a time, uh, you buy good quality pieces, and you collect them over time if needed, uh, if you don't want to dole out all the money in one shot. But at the same time, you can get the pieces that really suit your needs. But let's talk about what we think are essential in a kitchen. Let's start off from this side and move our, move our way down. You need a sm small saucepan of some sort. Now, in this case, this is a one quart saucepan, very, very small. Um, great for a couple if you're just uh, um, warming up a little small quantity of soup or you're cooking a small quantity of rice, uh, you know, small quantity of things. Obviously, a larger family, a small sa saucepan would be at least a two quart, double the size of this. But, you know, starting off with something small uh, is almost essential. You can't get away uh, from it. Next, we have a medium sized saucepan. In this case, this is three quarts, so it's three times the capacity of that small one. Uh, again, you can go three or four quarts. For that medium size where you don't want to pull out a big pot, but you do want to warm up some uh, tomato sauce or you want to cook some tomato sauce for a pasta, uh, you need some kind of medium sized pot. Of course, you could use an enamel cast iron saucier for that, uh, you know, in equivalent capacity. So we're not necessarily talking about, you know, the, the actual material used, but the size and the type of pot used. Um, next, I would say, are these two right here, a fry pan. Uh, you can't get very far without having a fry pan in your collection. Uh, you're you know, constantly, whether you're sautéing or frying, uh, you need some sort of a fry pan. And of course, there's various materials. We'll get into that in a second. And then you have a sauté pan. The difference between a sauté pan and a fry pan is twofold. First of all, it's deeper, so you can uh, it holds a lot more liquid when you're using liquids in your cooking. Second of all, you always have a lid uh, to cover it up. Big difference between a fry pan, which is typically always open, uh, and very shallow for frying only. Next, you, have, you need a pot. Eight quart is probably the standard uh, stock pot size uh, that you use in your kitchen. If you're a family of five and above, probably eight quarts is not enough. But if you're a family of two, maybe six quarts or seven quarts is enough. But if you're boiling uh, water to cook pasta or you're making a batch of soup, you need a, a large pot. It's essential. Um, next, we have our enamel cast iron um, Dutch oven or French oven, as uh, they say in France. Uh, but something for long, slow cooking, for braising. You would you would use it on the stove top. You would put it in the oven. Um, it, very versatile. Whenever you're doing any kind of stew or braise of any sort. Okay. And then moving on, you got your cast iron. So you know, I think this is an essential component, and it's so cheap that everybody should have a cast iron just for the steak of uh, using it with your proteins, with your, with your steaks, with any kind of meat, with any kind of fish. Uh, you can't be cast iron for uh, how it cooks those, how it sears the steak, how it sears that protein. Uh, non-stick, now you don't necessarily need a non-stick. Um, if you do get a non-stick, I would suggest getting one that is not made with uh, um, most of the non-stick materials out there that are Teflon based, that are, that are polymer based, uh, because of various reports on their uh, on health side effects. You can, you can Google that and figure out your own research. In this case, I'm holding one that's made with a ceramic uh, nonstick surface. It's not as nonstick as a good Teflon pen, but it's quite nonstick. Uh, but like I said, you don't necessarily need this. The only reason you would ever use a nonstick pen is to cook eggs. And if you have a cast iron skillet that's well seasoned, um, you can cook eggs on a cast iron without a problem. In fact, as long as you're using some kind of oil, cooking oil, you could use a fry pan, a stainless steel fry pan as well to cook eggs. So you don't necessarily need a nonstick. Um, and then lastly, we have a uh, roasting pan. I mean, you need something to go into your oven to put your whole chicken or to, to roast your potatoes, uh, pretty much essential. You know, there's a lot of other uh, shapes of cookware out there, but these are the essentials. Uh, and these are pretty much represent the common sizes for the mid family size. Again, we encourage you to piece together your own um, set based on your own needs, based on the size of your family and how you cook. 
Okay, so let's talk about uh, what you need in your kitchen, all the various pieces. Uh, let me be the first to say that we are not a fan of sets that you buy uh, that are pre-assembled. First of all, you always get them from one brand, which means that uh, you're going to get all one material. That's not necessarily, uh, necessarily the best way to go because we've explained the differences in the different materials, the difference in advantages using a cast iron or enamel cast iron compared to stainless steel. 